Good morning or good afternoon, uh, whatever time of day it is you choose to turn tuned in. We're glad to have you and that you could join us today as we continue our lessons on faith and wisdom in the epistle of James. Today our lesson is for Sunday, August 23rd, and it's entitled Taming the Tongue. And the lesson focus is your words demonstrate your wisdom or lack thereof. So we'll be coming from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you again for this opportunity to seek and gain more wisdom and knowledge of you through your word today. I thank you for what you have imparted to me to share. Uh, now let your word be a lamp to the feet of those who would hear you and a, and a light to the path of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. James chapter 3 um, offers more instructions on wisdom for the Jewish Christians who are still James's primary audience. Today he speaks wisdom about the teaching tongue. As many of the Jews have, uh, having caught the faith, now inspired to teach God's word. Now James said, this is not the first time he talked about speech or speaking or the tongue. Uh, he previously addressed the tongue or speaking in chapters 1 and 2. In chapter 1, he, uh, around verse 19, he said to be quick to listen and slow to speak. And in chapter 2, he questions the character of one who speaks but fails to act accordingly. So let's look at uh, our, our scripture text today. I'm going to read, be reading from the NIV version from the um, book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 through uh, 4. And it reads this way. It says, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. At this particular time in, 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 uh, in history, teaching was a very highly valued and respected profession in the Jewish culture. So uh, James, in keeping with his theme of genuine faith and genuine wisdom, he offers some wisdom on what it means to be a teacher of God's word, which is something he's telling people is not to be taken lightly. And so uh, first he says there's a greater accountability for teachers and the responsibility to control what you say as a teacher. Uh, for that reason, James is, says teaching is not for everybody because your words matter. And, uh, and teachers especially are expected to control the things they say and how they say them. And all those who desire to be teachers of God's word need to know that God will hold them to a higher standard because of the powerful influence those words have on the lives of others. Now, he's not discouraging teachers but certainly warning those who don't have the integrity of heart to teach biblical truths effectively. And that's important as we'll see throughout the, the lesson today. So what, so what does that mean? Your words have to line up with your works and you as a teacher have to project purpose and meaning in the things that you talk. So anybody's reputation can be built on your conversation. In fact, that's how people determine, wind up determining the kind of person that you are. And in this day, with the rise in false teaching, James knew this could be a detrimental issue, especially for new converts. And right living was a constant issue, not just for unbelievers, but uh, for believers and even apostles and prophets. No one was exempt from faltering and word or deed. And in fact, and he acknowledges in verse 2 and includes himself when he says, uh, 
we all stumble in many ways. Uh, James was very familiar with this and understood that this was a treacherous road for many who would be teachers who couldn't live up uh, to what they were teaching. In other words, teachers are not perfect. And teachers, the teaching does not make them perfect. But the goal of the Bible teacher is to press toward the mark for the high calling in Jesus Christ. So teachers should strive for perfection in their speech in order to stop stumbling, to stop saying things the wrong way or saying the wrong things. We press toward the mark through prayer, through Bible study, spending time with God, which changes the heart. And when the heart changes, the speech changes. So we can have control of our speech if we have the love of God in our hearts, which compels us to speak in love to our brothers and sisters, to build them up while glorifying Christ in everything we say and do. And that's the responsibility of teaching God's word. Then, uh, like James illustrates, uh, also in this section uh, about the bit and the rudder, the tongue is like the bit in a horse's mouth or the rudder of a ship. The bit and the rudder are relatively small things, but they hold great power over the horse and the ship uh, that they steer and control where they go. Uh, likewise, the tongue of teachers has great power to influence and to guide the hearts and minds of students. And again, that's the reason for God's high standard for his teachers, and that's, that's the standard today. So before you speak, ask yourself, is, 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 what I want, is what I want to say truthful? Is it necessary? And does it build people up or edify them or edify someone? Uh, James states uh, uh, those, are the, those are the key principles, key things that we ought to be thinking about as we uh, uh, begin to teach or present the word of God to someone. Now in verses 5 through 8, James steers away from the teachers per se and reminds the general community believers that the tongue can be troublesome for them if they don't also learn to tame the tongue. And so this section is, is captioned, Taming the Prideful Tongue, and this is verses 5 through 8, and it reads this way. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are, are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poisons. So in the first section, uh, the tongue is a controller. And uh, James used the bit and the rudder to demonstrate that. And here, it is a destroyer if it's not brought under control. And as a tiny spark engulfing everything in its path, the tongue is described as a devastating fire. Its, fu its fuel is selfish pride. James calls it boasting, driven to edify oneself at the expense of anybody and everything in its path. That's what a flaming fire does, especially when it's out of control. It starts small, but doesn't stop until it's done its damage. Someone said God had to, had, had to know what he was doing when he gave us two eyes, two hands, two feet, two all, but only one tongue. And that even that uh, uh, is likely the most dangerous member of our bodies, and we only have one. You'd be surprised how casual, sarcastic comments can inflict emotional pain that can lead to uh, relational problems, physical problems, and even death. Today, uh, bullying comes to mind, something that really has taken a hold in our society and affected so many people. 
And James seems to suggest that our tongue really is not tameable. Even though we have the ability to tame every kind of animal on earth and even manipulate the land, air, and sea to our benefit, we cannot control the world or the words, rather, that come out of our mouths. It's not an ability. What he's really saying is it's not a, an ability that humans possess in our own power. And that's key, in our own power. But according to James, that makes our tongues uncontrollably deadly like a poison. But the wise Christian recognizes the power of the tongue and how damaging it can be to others if not properly controlled. Now, James advised one remedy for this early in chapter 1. We uh, mentioned it already. He said, be quick to hear and slow to speak. So before you speak, remember that words are like fire. You can neither control nor reverse the damage they can do. Once they're out there, the damage is done. So if the boastful tongue is not enough, the tongue presents another problem, hypocrisy. And here's what James has to say about taming the hypocritical tongue in verses 9 through 12. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. One of the same, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can salt spring, neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So here is what, here is where our testimony and our witness really take a hit. And one of our teachers, I think Sister Floyd mentioned, Sister Flanoy mentioned it uh, maybe a week or so ago. We praise God on Sunday. We curse our neighbor on Monday. And that's what James is talking about. That's the hypocrisy in our speech. That's the hypocrisy in the way we teach when, uh, when we can't uh, exemplify the, the, the character that God would have us to, uh, to portray. We immediately lose. We immediately lose our credibility. Anything we say has no meaning and has no effect like the undrinkable salt water that James talks about, or the fruitless vines. Only when the heart is right and the tongue blesses both God and those whom he created in his image is there a credible testimony to his glory. Clearly, the issue regarding the words we speak has everything to do with the condition of our heart. As Matthew 12 and 34 says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, even though we are not perfect in all our ways, remember to strive toward perfection takes us closer to God and makes us more like him in our hearts. And it's the changing of our hearts that speaks volumes. And finally, always remember that wisdom and folly is on the tip of our tongues. But you can change your world by changing your words. And I'll leave you with this from Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. And it says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you are to answer each person. Thank you again for viewing today, and we'll see you next week.